Spontaneous Combustion is one of those movies that has long deserved a look here on Shitcase Cinema, so let's go. Now, back in 1955, we're introduced to Brian and Peggy, who were retarded enough to volunteer to be guinea pigs in a radioactive blast experiment. Let me guess, they live. Well, yeah, but we'll get to that in a few seconds. So, the blast goes off, they survive, no problems, life's jolly good. So, nine months later, Peggy has a kid, and holy dog shit, they're on fire! Well, what did you expect? This film is called Spontaneous Combustion after all, so get used to this, it's hilarious. Now fast forward a number of years and the baby turns out to be Brad Dourif. Could be worse. How many years? Who knows, make up your own mind. He looks like Maggot Man. See, I told you it could be worse. Now Brad plays a guy called Sam who's a college tutor and he's dating a lovely lady called Lisa. Now the thing with Dourif is he usually plays Looney Tunes type dudes and this is no different, thankfully. But anyway, check this out. Brad is in a swanky restaurant when all of a sudden... <laughs> oh dear me. Neat party trick there, Brad. So, this is the start of things going bad for Brad. Poor guy. Plus he's got a bitch of an ex-wife, but we can forget about her. She doesn't do anything interesting until the very end. Oh, ruined that for you there. So, with his burnt finger, Brad goes to get it looked at by a senile old doctor. See, that finger looks like you burned it lighting a cigarette. What kind of a medical theory is that, you old fossil? What was that? A little static electricity. What? When do you see blue electricity fly from a person's hand only to dismiss it as static electricity? This guy is a prize winning moron, so hopefully he'll come out with more stupid crap later on. I love this. Brad is in his car and turns on the radio and straight away, conveniently, a guy is talking about spontaneous combustion. Spontaneous combustion. Oh, yes. So this naturally gets Brad's brain spinning around and he goes and stares at his fireplace for what seems like a lifetime while he sees flashes of his parents, which makes no sense because it's not like he exactly chilled out with them because they died when he was a baby, but whatever. Now, while Brad stares at the fireplace, let me tell you about this DVD. Now, it cost me 75 pence, and yes, it's the same one that's got Mirror Mirror on there, but I mostly bought it for spontaneous combustion, because some years ago, an ex-girlfriend of myself used to laugh about this film all the time, because we thought it was complete rubbish. But it's only in recent years I thought, no, hang on a minute, there's actually worse films out there than spontaneous combustion. I mean, I've got a channel called Shitcase Cinema, so it's a fact. So Brad is still, oh come on, <laughs> brilliant, loved his face expression there. So he burnt his finger again, boo hoo. Let's see a fun scene. Dr. Simpson died. That's not fun at all. How? What happened? He burned to death. Yeah, it's most likely your fault there, old bean, zapping him with your static electricity hands. Spontaneous human combustion. Fuck off, Brad. You did it, in my opinion. Remember, static electricity hands. Which means you best keep your hands off your girlfriend. Now, the next few minutes are a mixture of random nonsense mixed with hilarity. I laughed my ass off. So, Brad gets on the phone to the guy from the radio show who reckons he's a psychic or something, and then before you know it, he's going on about a singing woman. Brad bursts out that he saw his parents, remembers some singing lady, even though he was only a few days old at the time, remember, which makes no sense. Then he randomly tells a radio dude about the birthmark on his hand, but he does it like he's only just noticed it, like he's a complete gimp. This is Dr. Persons, how may I help you? Something's happening to me. Just a moment, there is a woman. It... She is singing. Oh, God, I think my mother's name is Peggy. Oh my God, I have a birthmark on my hand. It's twice its normal size, it's growing. Oh God! Hello. The radio guy hangs up, but wants Brad to call back the next week, yeah, like he's going to do that. But Brad calls back instantly and gets stuck talking to John Landis in a completely out of place cameo, and Brad loses his rag and pulls this epic face here once again. And John Landis ends up setting on fire and Brad's arm kind of melts and makes funny sounds like he's a robot or something. Honestly, it's the best moment of the entire film in all its random, confusing glory. In fact, I declare this a shitcase challenge. The next time you're on the phone, randomly say what Brad did and see what kind of reaction you get. I mean, Brad's acting is the only reason to watch this film. It makes me laugh, and laughing is good for you, so there you go. Spontaneous combustion is good for your health. Thanks, Brad.
Okay, now here's my top five mental Brad Dourif moments. No, pick up your mind reading, son of a bitch. Listen, you idiot. I don't think this is as important as your lousy snap. I have to give you this injection. Fucking gotta kill it. If you're in on my kill, then fuck you. No, no, God, we said no. Oh, and I'll throw in this as a bonus because his cock is on fire. Look! I noticed something while watching this film. Brad Dourif never blinks once. And thinking about it, he never blinks in any other film that I've seen him in. That's why he's always got tears running down his cheeks. I mean, come on, Brad, use your eyelids for once. Even that doll in the Child's Play film blinks more than you do. So he's rushed to hospital about his arm and he's put in a wheelchair. It's his arm, not his legs that are on fire, you ticks. Man alive. Well, and his crotch was on fire, but whatever. So the doctor has a chat with Brad's girlfriend, Lisa. Just how well do you know Samson? Do you mean Sam? What else could I mean? What? So there's absolutely no reason whatsoever for any kind of emotional crescendo. <laughs> I mean, you are just a little bit hysterical, aren't you? What? Her boyfriend keeps exploding into fire and his manhood's probably been burnt to a crisp and you're claiming that she's overreacting. It's fair play, I guess. Just another normal day. So Brad ends up fighting off evil doctors and makes this guy burn. Ooh, it's those deadly static electricity hands again at work. So Brad is driving along in his car, stops to use a payphone so he can chat to Lisa and delivers some more hilarious moments of craziness. And while delivering this craziness, fire goes down the phone line and a hand appears. It's odd, but it's an odd film. So anyway, some pigs turn up so Brad demonstrates his little static electricity trick once again. And now he can even command pigs to explode into flames. Now that's priceless. And then Brad decides to kill an old security officer who shot his hand. Seriously, that cry never gets old. Now here's my top five Brad Durif cries. Now I just have to comment on the tagline on this film. The cleanest kill on earth. No it isn't, because when he kills them, his dead bodies on the floor and black goo coming out of them. So the film ends on an insane level, trust me. I was just like, what? So Brad chats this old git here who had something to do with the radioactive bomb tests in 1955 and Brad obviously wants him to die, so turns himself into a terrible looking puppet on fire and then the old man bites it. <laughs> wow, that's like Oscar worthy. Come on people, don't you dig it? Then we see Lisa witnessing this power plant going ape shit before she's attacked by a crazy doctor. Why? And why is he walking around with a syringe of green goo? And why does he burn up and make weird sounds? So Lisa eventually kills him with the green shit, she sets on fire, uh, a woman turns up who happens to be Brad's ex-wife from the beginning, fair enough, and she sprays Lisa's arm. You know, I've lost track now with what's going on, but anyway, the old dead doctor is alive once again. The woman sets on fire and black shit starts to melt out of her. Why? What is happening with this film? I mean, it's just stupid by this point. And now the old guy looks like that atrocity from the end of Robocop, and man, what's this? Looks like aliens are joining in the show now. Probably going to shove every DVD copy of Spontaneous Combustion up his ass. I mean, it makes about as much sense as everything else in this film. So Lisa burns up, her hand pops out of this blue hole and takes away the fire and it ends. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, I really need some scientific input. It's a shame Professor Bruce can't be asked making the effort to appear in these shitcase videos. But anyway, I guess it's shitcase quality. There's no doubt in that. So I'm just going to give it four and a half out of ten.